Cameras can be super tricky in the wild and sometimes just downright uncooperative. Back some years ago, my dad and cousin Matt had the odds stacked against them when they were approached by a 170 inch mule deer in Colorado. I'm Taylor Drury and this is a Throwback Thursday edition of DoD TV. This segment of DoD TV is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. You know, each year, for our big game tape, I like to take at least one trip out west. And this year, much like last year, I was gonna head west to Donnie Carr and Golden Eagle Outfitters. Last year, Tracy and I went and we celebrated our 15th anniversary in style. So as this season is rolling around, you know, I'm drifting back, I'm thinking about that hunt. And uh, I know how much fun I had, I know how much fun Tracy had to have had. And I said, you know what, honey, for our 16th anniversary, why don't we go back to Calhan, Colorado with Donnie Carr and Golden Eagle Outfitters. So I get to Colorado Springs and obviously I'm flying solo. Apparently Tracy wasn't quite as excited about coming back out here as I was, but I'm going mule deer hunting and I cannot wait to get out of here. I cannot wait to get my luggage. I can't wait to get it packed up, get it out to the rental car, and get headed east about 35 miles to Calhan, Colorado. You know, you get away from the office, you get away from all the hustles and bustles of everyday life, and uh, you can't wait to get out in these wide open spaces, big sky country out here out west, and uh, what do we hit? We leave the airport from Colorado Springs, traffic. Home sweet home. We're here at the beautiful Calhan Inn in Calhan, Colorado. Anytime there's air travel, I don't care if there's a scope on the gun or not, obviously it's muzzleloader season in Colorado, no optics allowed, I'm still gonna shoot that gun. I have to have confidence when I go out there the next day. We're losing a little bit of light, it's a little windy. We set up on the 100 yard range and I'm gonna take three shots. three shot group. I was very happy with the group. I made a few adjustments, pulled it right down on target, and I was ready for the next morning's hunt. You know, as we finished up at the range, I looked off to the west of that setting sun, and I said, oh baby, I'm in mule deer country, and I'm so happy to be here. The setting sun was just gorgeous that evening. Hey, how you doing? It's four o'clock, by the way. The night happened like that. The next morning we're on our way. It's myself and Matt Drury and we're headed out to meet Jackie. And um, you know, there had to be a little bit of a strategizing plan. Here it is day one. And this morning we are starting where Tracy and I finished our hunt last year after we watched those mule deer a few days. So I gotta feel good about our starting point because it was awfully special up there last year right where those big deer cross the fence and then where she killed. We're gonna start right there. That's why we're in somewhere. We set up those pines over there. Well, it didn't take long and Jackie had some good news. See him standing there? Oh, okay. there's two pines just to the left of it. We see some bucks at a distance, small bucks, now the strategy session continues. Well, there's some more coming up, right? Just to the right of the two pines. There's a doe. These bucks pop out and they're almost downwind. We have got to make tracks, get through on the backside of the bluff and get to these deer.
trying to shoot her earlier while we, while we were seeing one little box. But we got a real nice deer right in front of us and the wind's good. This may work. Okay, so now it's game on. We've got to get ourselves in a position to take one of these big muleys. We decided to position ourselves into the shadows and try and get within 150 yards. We covered the first 400 yards at a very fast pace, but when we got down to 200, it's time to crawl. Luckily, the rising sun behind our back created some shadows that we were able to get in and help use as cover. You know, as you're getting close and you know there are shooters in this group, it starts to turn into a little bit of a mass state of confusion. You know, which bucks are you seeing? Which ones can't you see? We're trying to crawl through the yuccas and those same plants that aid us in shielding our, our approach to them are also a little bit of a, a challenge to try and film through. See him right there. So here we are, Matt and I have not hunted together that often, and we're on this mule deer chase. We're both out of breath. The adrenaline's pumping in both of us. We got a mass state of confusion. We're trying to get in, get tight. Matt's trying to get footage. I'm trying to get a shot. We're trying to, to use every little alley we can to get to these bucks. Okay, stay right there. I want you to get on your knees when I'm ready. Okay. And then when you say, when you're on it, you tell me. Okay, as I find the gap, head down. You know, Matt's got to be thinking, he's shooting that deer? Of course, we're looking at two different deer. I take the shot and Matt tells me the deer's still standing there. And I'm watching a 170 inch deer run off with blood coming out of its side. What a stop, baby. What a stock, what fun. Here we are a year later from when Tracy and I were out here and I just took a giant muley on a fantastic stock. I mean, exactly where she killed hers, we're within 60 yards. We reviewed the footage and much to our dismay in our haste, um, I'm on one deer, Matt's on another. Tough situation to be in, both as a hunter and a cameraman. We had six or seven bucks right there on us and uh, we just flat screwed up poor communication on mine and his part and uh, it is one of the perils of filming but we thought it was a story worth sharing. We may have had our wires crossed but we had one more task at hand. We had to find this big deer. Mark, here he is down here. He's laying in the grass dead. We walked right past him. See? So he didn't come out of the No, he never came out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Put it there, buddy. All right. You know, what a fantastic trip. It goes to show you what type of hunting that Donnie Carr has. Well, Jackie, Terry and I say it all the time in the fall, will history repeat itself this year versus last? We use experiences we've had in the past to see what they're gonna do in the future. And history repeated itself almost a year to the day. I shot this buck within about, I'm gonna say 100 yards right. of where Tracy was sitting when she shot hers, and within about 40 or 50 yards of where her, her deer was standing. Genetically, they look similar. He's just a giant. You guys know how to grow them big out here. And I'd say we had some good luck, wouldn't you? I would say so. You did right, the deer did right, and uh, luckily the shot found its mark, and here's the dead deer, so thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Thank you, Jackie Murphy. Thank you, Golden Eagle Outfitters, and can't wait to call Tracy. <laughs> I don't come out here because there are 
tons and tons of mule deer. I come here for the quality. Genetically, I've never seen a better spot to hunt mule deer, hunt giant mule deer, than with Donnie Carr and Golden Eagle Outfitters. If you're at all interested in the trophy of a lifetime, give Donnie a call, because it is an amazing place to mule deer hunt. Ever wonder what goes on inside the brain of a whitetail buck that gets him up and on the move? Well, we've cracked that code and are delivering it to you in the DeerCast app, a revolution in deer movement forecasting. Available now for iOS and Android. Get ahead of your game with DeerCast. <laughs> We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV was brought to you by Mossy Oak.